Well, we're still awaiting news from uh, the National League about uh, the future. There's been some talk about uh, voiding the league. There's been other rumours suggesting that that, that uh, the, the National League itself, the, the main league, will will survive, and the two, the North and South, won't. So, um, joining us now to give us an update and tell us uh, how he's feeling about everything is the uh, Yeovil Town the Chairman Scott Priestnell. Good afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon. How are you? Good, thanks, Scott. The, I mean, as I said, we, there was some talk yesterday. We may we, we may get an outcome, possibly yesterday or today, but it, it seems to be ongoing. Is there still work being being done on this at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. There's obviously consultation with clubs happening. Um, there's lots of conversation in the background. We, we're obviously in dialogue with DCMS constantly, and also Sport England and. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes. This vote could take 28 days. It could take one or two days. It's uh, it's an on, it's an ongoing process now. Um, Scott, I think it's probably worth reminding a lot of people who who support teams in the National League know about this, but some who just follow the Premier League might not. It, it seems to boil down to the fact that at the start of the season, the government gave the National League a grant of was it 10 or 11 million pounds? It's 10 million. 10 yeah. million, and now they're the second amount of money. Um, the clubs thought it, the league thought it would be a grant, and the government say it's a loan. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. That's so, exactly correct. Yeah. So, so I guess what what I find really difficult to understand, a lot of people do, is how this must be written down. Some someone must have taken out going just to check on that. Yeah, that's sorted. Okay, we agree. We agree. It seems really sort of baffling to me that that, that, that there is this dispute. No, I agree. I, um, and that's that's the the situation that that we're in at the moment. You had. Um, you know, a meeting with with DCMS, um, the FA, the National League. Um, so a, a meeting where you know effectively ten million pound was handed over, which, of course, you know the National League and National League clubs are extremely grateful because without it we wouldn't have started the season. Um, but the but the minutes from that meeting just haven't been um, haven't been handed over because it will show the conversations. I mean the the, the CEO of the FA was is, who was in the meeting has, has gone on record last week stating that. He was under no illusion that the further support that the government were, you know, committed to for January, February, March, should the seat, should supporters not be allowed back in stadia, was through grants. There, there was no mention in that meeting of loans. So it's a bit of a shock to us at the moment. It's something we've we're obviously been dealing with now for a few weeks, and um, and our, our you know and our clubs will, will now have to. Um, make the decision, you know, put the decision into their own hands of whether we continue the season or not. So the government, sorry, Paul, so the hmm. government won't get, show you the minutes? We, no one has seen the minutes, yes. We've, right. They've been asked for by, by media and by ourselves, and, and they've not been disclosed. And, and is there a way, I mean, there must be a way of getting them. That's a Freedom of Information Act type thing. Or do they, you know, is it like, sort of, it's not like a, it's not like a, you know, a war no, memorandum not, that has to be held for 50 national years. National security, is it? Yeah. Is it? yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. But um, we haven't been able to get him, and, and neither has um, there has been many media requests put him in. In fact, even Sir Keir Starmer uh, held a meeting last week with national clubs with Alison McGovern, and uh, and also said that he would be on his agenda to go to the DCMS and get hold of those notes. So it's a uh, it's, it's a confusing situation. But one one we're left with, one we, we've we've got no choice. You know, we're already a month now down the line without any money. Um, without any supporters in, in stadia and you know there are a lot of clubs now in a perilous position you know already starting to hit financial hardship mm. I mean and, and there is a big difference between a loan and a grant um, and a, a really a loan is just kicking the can down the road which is which is not exactly. ideal we're just going to have to face that uh, at a later date plus I, I, I saw a statement you sent out uh, via the club website Scott saying that um, some clubs can't take loans out as part of their corporate structure so that doesn't help them anyway Exactly, we're looking for a solution that fits for 66 clubs here, and exactly that point. There are there, you know, because you know some clubs are charity owned, uh, corporate structured to allow them to take loans. Um, and if the conversation of loans would have come up in September before we start the season, you know, obviously that would have that would have come to the forefront then with with government at that point. Um, so. It is, it is it is a difficult thing. We've also got a you know situation where you know a club like Wrexham, who are, are based in Wales, playing out in, in the English league, can't even access the loans. Wow! I mean, because, because they're a Welsh football club. If how many clubs? I mean, I know you, you you're concerned, like a lot of chairmen, like a lot of fans of the clubs that that the teams in real peril here. That we could see teams 
disappear unless this is the outcome of this is right. I mean, could you see National League sides go? I mean, or is it really in, in, in the North and South Leagues that you think the issue would be? Or are there clubs in the National League you think could potentially fold unless this is sorted out? I mean, I believe there's clubs in all three divisions that, that can fall. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we we just not. I know we we've been. I've said before, we're grateful for for the grant that we got. But you know, in some cases, for some clubs, that still hasn't um, filled the hole of lost revenues from actually having supporters in in stadiums. But it has got us, you know, through the first three months of the season. So it's it's a very very realistic proposition. Um, and you know, we're now. It's not like we're at the start of that crisis. We're we're a month into it now. Bills have already had to be paid or have been missed for January. We're now into February. The season is continuing um, and those costs continue to build up. You know, the, the issue being that clubs, when, when we started the season, you take on contractual obligations like players um, and, uh, and all the associated costs of operating a football club. And you commit not just for three months, but you commit till the end of May or June when your season finishes. Do you get the impression, you say you're talking to the DCMS a lot, do you get the impression that they understand like how important Yeovil Football Club, Yeovil Town is to Yeovil? Absolutely. I, mean, I, I certainly do believe that. I, I don't think I would I'd say anything to, to the contrary that, that government and ministers don't understand the the the. the the, the situation here. I mean, um, the sports minister Nigel Hudson was quoted last week saying, "If if clubs can demonstrate its needs um, for grant funding urgently to survive, then they will ensure that option is available. They will not let clubs go to the wall." Um, but the only solution on the table at present is is loans. And like I said, like like you said before, that just kicks the financial hardship down the road for mm. two or four years. It doesn't deal with the issue now. And we're only deal- talking about the three months of January, February, and March. Our season continues through April, May, and, and into June in, for, for playoffs. So th- this is this is just part of the conversation. I think it's getting lost in translation that that if, if it was loans, we would have mothballed the season. I would have, you know, I would have expected that what the vote would have been if we'd have voted on loans because it's just not conceivable for, for clubs of our level. Um, we are professional, but we just don't have the commercial revenues to to pay back these this, this kind of amount of money. Mm. And finally, the National League have, uh, have set up a, a, a petition at change.org, haven't they? So people can hopefully go there and sign and show their support. Absolutely, and that's what it's all about—just to show you, you know, show you support and 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 try and appeal to government to to make this U-turn because, you know, a lot of these 66 clubs are are community clubs. Mm. They don't make huge sums of money. They they do so much work for their community and and their towns and cities, and you know, and 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 work so hard. You know, not just to allow the, the you know those people to access their facilities, but you know deal with real issues in the community. It's, it's, it, uh, and I know the bigger clubs do that, but it, it's it's such an important. You know, for example, you mentioned my club of Yeovil Town. I don't think there's another professional club for 40 or 45 miles. Mm. So we have an awful you know large area to cover, and you know it would be catastrophic to think that Yeovil Town wouldn't exist or any other club like Yeovil Town because of a you know a you know a, a, a miscommunication that, that happened in September. Well, uh, good to talk to you. We'll, we'll um, tweet out from uh, TSH and J. Yeah, the I've, just, I've just tweeted that petition. Yeah, out. we'll we'll send out the link. Uh, good to talk to you, Scott. We wish you well. Thanks very much. Appreciate your time. Thank Th- you. Thanks, Scott. And look, I, I, I know we've got to break for the news, and I know Scott has to be sort of diplomatic. They're talking yeah. to DCMS, but and I know there are more important things happening at the moment, and it's a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. It's not a huge amount of money, mm. but what what we continually ask for from the government is transparency. Mm. These minutes exist. Someone was taking, you know, unless no one's taking notes in that meeting. Yeah, they've taken the notes. Show us the notes. It's yeah. not hard. If it says loans, then it says loans. That's fine. But if it doesn't, just show them because you know i was interesting what he said about you know he does he believes for certain that the that the dcms understand how important these mm. clubs are i am slightly skeptical that there are that many people around that main table when they're doling out money everywhere who really love football mm-hmm. and, that, and that's not a crime lots yeah. of people most people listening to this love football but a lot of people don't that's totally fine but just to just to have an awareness of how important these clubs are it just show the minutes. It's not hard. Is no, it? that is that is quite troubling, isn't it? I'm, uh, hopefully they will do that. But anyway, we will link out, uh, send out that link to that uh, petition at change.org.